Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. We are here in the driveway with the whole LLOD fleet minus Ashley's RAV4, which was right there, but she had to go to the store real quick. So hopefully she's back before it's dark. Sorry about this crazy exposure in this driveway. I can't wait till I'm at my new place with a better filming setup, but right here in my driveway, my house casts this big shadow here and then I'm in the shadow and then all of the trees are overexposed and crazy and it is what it is. But anyway, I had a couple of my vehicles out. They're usually kind of tucked away and undercover, especially the Land Cruisers. I'll talk more about that later, but I had a moment. They were all out. So I was like, let's do a video. I asked if you guys wanted to see it. You said yes. And I want to do a little disclosure real quick. Like this video is not meant to brag or not meant to be a flex, not anything like that. Like it's just, they're trucks. Who cares? Just stupid trucks. Uh, so I just wanted to say that because basically I was talking to Ashley about doing this video and she's like, that's going to come off as braggy. I don't know if you should do it. So I don't want it to. They're just cool vehicles. You guys follow me, uh, a lot of you, for my vehicles and I figured I'd just throw them all in one video. Okay, so I think I'll probably do the trucks first so I can move them out of the way and then get back to these vehicles and show you all of them. And I'll give you a quick run through real quick. This is my 2016 Toyota Tacoma. This Tacoma has been a pretty integral part of like kind of the overland aspect on my channel. This is the original Tacoma, the tan one that you saw. I got this in 2016. So I've had this for over six years, same Tacoma. It's been through some changes. Love that thing. This is the newest edition here. This is a 2022 Tundra. This is basically my daily driver. Well, not basically. It is my daily driver. Love this truck. Then we have the Jayco Terrain. So that is a Class B RV 4x4 Sprinter upfitted by Jayco and further upfitted by me. That is just the ultimate kind of family adventure, bad weather comfortable, awesome vehicle. Love that thing. Now I'll talk more about my van in just a little bit, but if you want the opportunity to win a custom sprinter of your own, Omaze, the sponsor of this video, is actually running a sweepstakes that you might be interested in. Omaze is a company whose mission is to transform typical charitable giving by offering once in a lifetime prizes while helping nonprofits raise money and awareness. Now this one specifically is for your chance to win a custom Mercedes Sprinter van with an additional $80,000 of eco-friendly Vansmith customizations and proceeds go to support a great cause, the Justin J. Watt Foundation. And I thought that this opportunity was just really cool because I have a custom sprinter that I love to take out on adventures and I was just wondering, if you won, where would you go first? Would you try to take a couple months off work and travel the US? Always love to hear where people would take their custom sprinters. So yeah, for your chance to win, all you gotta do is go to omaze.com slash L-L-O-D. There you'll find ways you can enter, more information about the van itself, more information about the charity, and yeah, hope you win, and thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Now we'll get back to the rest of the fleet. This is my 97 Land Cruiser. It's a FCJ 80, 80 series. This is a 40th anniversary triple locked because the 80 series Land Cruiser guys like to throw that in when their Land Cruiser is triple locked. All that means it has factory front and rear lockers as well as the center differential locker. Uh, so this truck's kind of, I mean, not a unicorn unicorn, but a pretty rare specimen that I have the true Land Cruiser enthusiast hate that I just painted it some random brown color, but I love it. I love it. This is a 1984. FJ60, a 60 series Toyota Land Cruiser as well. So the previous generation to that. This actually has been butchered and Toyota enthusiasts hate it because it has a 5.7 liter V8 engine from an old like 93 Pontiac Firebird or something. I did not do that swap, bought it that way. Uh, if you're wondering, it's still very slow, four speed manual and slow. This is my 2007 Toyota Sequoia. This one I bought, I had a LX570 that was just kind of too nice to be the family beater mobile and I sold it and bought this and this is now kind of the big P2 
people hauler, hauling a lot of gear, going on a bigger trip, family mobile. And then what you don't see here is Ashley's 2018 or 2019, I don't know, the first, first year of the new generation RAV4. So those are the rigs. And I'm just gonna give kind of a quick run through of each of them, like a little more detailed dive. And yeah, so this here, 2016 Toyota Tacoma, it's full CBI armored, everything, uh, Prince Hugh rack, KC highlights all around. It's got these, actually I'll flip them on for you. It's got these cool ambers. They don't, they're not actually flashing like that. It's just the refresh rate on my camera versus that, but Amber and, so these are from Morimoto, and then these are the Running for Taco Grill Light Kit, and it looks like, just like a straight line across, kind of, I don't know, I thought it was cool. And, oh, Amber Fogs, so yeah, that's the front, and then we got Flex Era 3s, this is a custom, full kind of Flex Era 3 light bar that we have mounted up there. Uh, on a custom Prinsu wind deflector. Uh, we have Fox suspension all around, 35 inch Toyo MT tires on Relations race wheels. These are true beadlocks on this baby. And tucked behind there, you can see our power brake, big brake kit clutch for this fat, heavy Tacoma with big tires. Uh, I do have 529 gears in there. I have some tune, but I wanna try a different tune, honestly. It's a full multicam black vinyl wrap on the whole thing. Cascadia vehicle, four by four, hood solar, Flexera threes. I did get the windows tinted now. Um, what else we got in here? Super dirty, because this is basically my truck that when I just want to head out on an adventure real quick, I hop in it and it's all ready to go. I actually keep my camping gear in the back and everything. So basically just got to grab some food, hop in this truck and then go out for a weekend of camping. So that's why I kind of switched to having a daily driver. Cause this one is just like full kind of expedition build. Now we got the High 10 from Stinger, love that. Adds CarPlay, 10 inch screen. Got some magnet mounts and all kinds of stuff. I talk a lot about this truck, so I'm not gonna go super deep into every detail. You can go to llod.us slash taco. And I try to keep that relatively updated. Uh, we got the Miso Customs LED kit that are both red or white. You can toggle between them. Uh, I got a ham radio in here. Yesu FTM 400, it's kind of a wreck. Again, this is just whenever I went camping last, I didn't unload everything. I got a two thirds rear seat delete uh, for the dog bed, but can still, this one has a seat belt and so I can still put a third person back in here. So, yeah, and then up top we have Pelican's cargo case with their, I think it's their universal roof rack mounting system. Cool case, I don't always have cases on here, but I may keep it on through the winter because uh, when I go out with Ashley, she likes to bring a lot of blankets and she's pregnant right now, so she has this big crazy body pillow she likes to bring. That's just kind of a nice place to shove that uh, kind of heavy or that lightweight but bulky stuff. Uh, Max tracks here. We got the iCamper Sky Camp Mini. This is probably, this is probably the most detailed I'll be on a rig, honestly, because I got to get through a bunch of rigs still. So we got the full size spare. This is probably the newest addition here. CBI dual swing out. So this swings out. I have two tables back here. I'll actually just show it real quick. So got one table here, another fold down table there. And then the tailgate obviously folds down and that is, that's that. Diamondback cover, obviously this has been the, the first mod I did this to this Tacoma and still going strong. Absolutely love just having a weather sealed, secure 
giant thing of storage in there, so I don't care. I just put everything in there and I go to the store or whatever. And I don't ever have to worry about people trying to steal stuff out of it or anything like that. And then if it rains and snows and muddy and whatever, I know everything in there is gonna be pretty good. And then we have the 22 Tundra. So this is, it's kind of misleading. The Tundra is definitely bigger than the Tacoma, same size tires, 35s. These are the Toyo AT3s though. They're all terrain, snowflake rated tire. Love this tire. Have it on Sequoia, had them on the LX, have them on Ashley's RAV. Great everyday driver tire that still has some chunk to get you off road. But this truck has had, I've had no issues, zero issues. I know a lot of people kind of had issues. Uh, well, I don't even know about a lot of people, but You've seen some issues on the interwebs and I haven't had any. And I love the look. I don't think they look very good stock, especially with all that chrome, but toss some bigger tires on them. Bumper looks good. So this is CBI bumper, front bumper with the hoop. I have a Warren winch in there and a Warren winch in there. Factor 55 ultra hooks on both of them and KC highlights, Flex Air 3's up in here. This is a special one that has a DOT fog light in it. Uh, love those lights. And we have a little Westcott design collar lift kit. It's essentially a spacer lift. They don't like to call it that, but that's kind of basically what it is. I'll probably swap at some point to like a true lift kit suspension. I don't know what I'll do on that, Dobinson, Fox, Kings, I don't, I don't really know. But I've kept this relatively stock and I like it that way. It drives amazing. Uh, I do think 37 inch tires look so cool on these things. I may swap to 37s for a purely aesthetic reason, but the 35s are really the sweet spot on this truck. You can fit a full size 35 inch spare tire in the factory spare tire location under the bed. I have a matching, so I have a same wheel and tire combo, full size spare under there. And it's awesome. So my take, 35s are perfect on the Tundras, but I may still go to 37s just because. Uh, these are, like I said, Toyo AT3s and on relations race wheels, these are the RR6s and these are the RR6s these are in the matte bronze, no beadlock. These ones have the beadlock with the gold bolts. Uh, and then I deleted all the chrome through some painting, some emblem caps. So inside, relatively stock. I did a full truck build update on this relatively recently. So if you want super detailed about that, I did a whole truck gear video with everything I keep in here because there's lots and lots of storage under the back seat. Uh, and this is kind of a mess because I'm building a house right now and just throwing a bunch of junk in the back of that all the time. This one also has the Diamondback covers. I have nothing on it right now, though I do have a rack system I can put in so I can toss a rooftop tent on it or whatever. And I do have the rack system just sitting there because I'm running out of room at my house. Uh, Diamondback cover, love it again for all the reasons I said before, but it's great for a daily driver truck because actually I don't think I have much back here. Oh, I got a little bit back here. I got this magnetic sweeper for the property. It's got the Diamondback 4T shallow bin. This is some more PEX for more radiant heating. Miscellaneous odds and ends back here, but it's nice because I just keep stuff in there. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about people stealing it or whatever. This truck's super dirty. <laughs> uh, but 2022 Tundra, love this truck. It's been, it's been great. I'm gonna move these out of the way real quick. Okay, next we have the Jayco Terrain 4x4. So this is a Sprinter, four wheel drive Sprinter that was built up by Jayco. So uh, none of the exterior stuff you see was done by Jayco, but they do the full RV build inside. So super cool vehicle. I'm uh, partnered with Jayco, Jayco ambassador of sorts. Oops, left this open to air out. But inside here, it's a full class BRV, diesel heater, refrigerator, insane lithium battery. 
uh, system, so no onboard generator, giant battery under there, inverter, uh, an alternator that charges everything. We got solar on the roof, roof racks, vents, AC. This thing is awesome. Great seats for passengers. These seats swivel around. This bed drops down from the ceiling. I got a big garage area back here for hauling stuff. I built a little bench with a little uh, microwave, convection oven, air fryer, has full bathroom in here, water, everything you'd expect out of an RV, but very small. So great for one, two, even three people really. Uh, once you add some dogs to the mix and add another person, then it'll get quite cramped in here. So I'm actually kicking around the idea of at some point in the future, maybe moving up to something even a little bigger than this. This is the short wheelbase, 144, the shortest Sprinter 4x4 you can get. Uh, but I'll talk more on that probably in a future video, talking about RVs basically. We have the Toyo AT3s on this as well, slightly bigger than his stock. This is the biggest you can really go without running into too many issues, 275, 70R17s. I did get this agile off-road fender kit that basically moves that fender back and clears room for this setup. It's on a pair of black rhinos, or a set of black rhinos, I forget. I forget what model. Wrapped, uh, this was wrapped by my friend Jake Lucid Wraps in Denver. The design, the topo design is from my friend Gabe Tam, tamfamgram.com. And we got some big Casey Highlights Flex Air 4s, massive ham radio antenna, Backwoods Adventure Mods front bumper. We got a worn winch, 12,000 pound VR12S, I believe, VR Evo, VR Evo 12S with synthetic cable and a Factor 55 Ultra Hook. The Backwoods bumper has a front hitch. So this was actually something this company sent out, Adventure Hammock Systems. Uh, I wasn't sure I was ever going to use this. Then we went camping once and Isabella wanted a hammock and there were no trees around. And I realized that would come in handy. Coincidentally, at about the same time, Talon put one on his van. So this basically hooks into a hitch. You could put it on the rear as well, but the front's kind of nice. And it folds out and you can attach a hammock right there. This does, I haven't had this on long. It does mess with the parking sensors if you leave it in all the time and I haven't actually driven it yet with the adaptive cruise control sensor. So I'll report back on that later. Uh, then other than that, we got the Backwoods Adventure Mods side ladder and the Backwoods roof rack. I do have a coupon code with them. LLOD, I believe, saves 10% off of everything Backwoods. I also put a Pelican vault case attached to here. So here we have solar and everything. I got a wee boost back there. This is the air conditioner. So I just wanted to put an extra box for storing lighter stuff that I don't use as often, though it is super easy to access that with this ladder. We got all the normal RV hookups on this thing. And then in the back, I have this setup from Owl Vans. So this is their, I forget what it is. I think the Sherpa. And this is their B2, which is box and bike carrier. So I have a box from Backwoods Adventure Mods, bike carrier up here, and then a propane tank for if I wanna run a fire pit or cook outside with propane. Just a sweet, sweet, sweet setup. I have a bunch of videos of this on the channel as well. So if you want more, check those out. And then next to that is my Land Cruiser, 80 Series Land Cruiser, FCJ80. 40th anniversary, triple locked. It's a, it's a gem. I bought this for pretty cheap back before prices went crazy. I think I got it for like 14 grand. Granted, I've done a lot to it since then, but it was built up pretty well. It did have front and rear bumpers. It had lift. I put, I, it didn't drive great. So I put longer control arms, like lower control arms, radius arms under, put Dan, Delta, pan hard bracket in the rear, really cleaned up the driving a lot, did a lot of miscellaneous maintenance items and stuff out of the GFC, put bigger tires. These are 37 inch, these are actually brand new, 37 inch Toyo MTs on this baby, on the Relations race wheels 
I believe these are the RR2S. Beautiful combo. These I did have to put on wheel spacers as well. Uh, and I love, love, love the look. Had to do a little bit of fender trimming to get them to not rub. Still rubs when flexed at lock, but no rubbage on the pavement, which is nice because full disclosure, I don't drive this thing much, nor do I drive that thing much. I primarily drive the Sequoia and the Tundra, whereas my primary adventure vehicles are the Tacoma and the van. So this vehicle has kind of been relegated to really, really beautiful artwork. For me, sometimes a Sunday cruise, occasionally I'll take it on a trail, but it just, it's obviously more capable, solid axle front and rear, front and rear lockers. This has a front and rear winch, has a dual battery system. It's a full build. I built out a whole drawer system with integrated cooktops and fridge storage and everything in the back. I'm not actually gonna show you, but I built this whole rear seat delete, long 60 inch, 500 pound slider drawer system in here. This thing's pretty amazing. I've been slowly rebuilding the interior. It's kind of a longer term restoration project. I rewrapped the steering wheel. I did that myself, wasn't too bad. Put in some Shielmans. Got this custom little uh, armrest cover done up for me by Black Hills Bills on Instagram and uh, leather maker, I forget, I'll link it down below. But this is a great vehicle. It just, for most of what I do, the Tacoma is a superior vehicle. Has more creature comforts, has more power, drives the mountain passes a little better. This thing is very, very, very slow. There's no way around it, except for a supercharger would help some. A turbo would help some, or a big, big LS swap would help, or some other swap would probably help. But this is a heavy, chunky, slow, old vehicle. And it drives smooth and it tracks true, but it just doesn't have much power. So that's my main grape. And also it's just getting really nice at this point to where, yes, it's worthy of being taken out, absolutely and the purists and the diehards will hate me for not wheeling it more, but I just don't, it's mine. I can do what I want with it, but it's mostly just beautiful artwork that I occasionally drive. And I know that's a stupid waste of money and a waste of an absolutely legendarily capable land cruiser, but it is what it is. So that's the 80 series, love it. Probably my favorite vehicle to look at. Uh, probably, I think it's Ashley's favorite looking vehicle, probably most people's favorite looking vehicle in my fleet, maybe their favorite vehicle in my fleet, but it just, the Tacoma does everything this does and plenty more, and this could do better on some of the gnarliest trails, but I know how my Tacoma handles and it does great and it gets me where I need to go. So that's kind of, yeah. This is another stupid vehicle I own for no reason really other than I wanted it. This is an FJ60, though I did get a screaming deal on this. Uh, it was, I could probably sell it now for like 30 grand because it's a pretty clean example. This is another one that I've been slowly kind of restoring here and there. I bought it, it was in okay shape, but I've done a lot of work to it since I bought a lot of mechanical work, axles were twisted, some other crap, had a lot of leaks in it. So this has an old V8 swap out of a old, like a 93 Camaro or something like that, 5.7 liter V8, but it's not fast at all. It sounds really nice, but it's not fast. Uh, it's a little faster than that, but this is definitely the second slowest vehicle in the fleet and it doesn't track that great. I still need to do some stuff, figure some stuff out with it. Uh, but it's been, I'm gonna keep it like relatively stock like this. It has a little bit of lift. This is on 33 inch tires on steelies. I've done some restoration in here. It's got the Corbo seats. These are pretty nice. Got a nice big vault in here. I swapped for these super nice, fancy, 
let's see, let me adjust the exposure manually real quick here. So these rosin system visors, which I saw on some Icon Land Cruisers and just needed to have them. So got those in there. Just kind of a fun little restoration project that, I don't know, the paint's really crappy. There's not much rust, but there's a few spots of rust. I think the previous owner probably knew about this and just covered it up with some paint. So we got some bubbling here that wasn't there when I bought it. He told me there wasn't any rust on it, but obviously I got a little bit of rust issues to work out uh, under there at some point. But when you look around it, it's pretty nice. I think he redid some of this as well, the fenders, cause you can tell there's like different paint colors and the paint is just, it's not nice, you know? It's kind of looks all right from afar, but the paint needs some serious love. But anyway, just kind of a restoration project of mine. Love Land Cruisers. Eventually I'd like to start my own Land Cruiser Museum. So these are, these are the 60 and the 80 variants in my Land Cruiser Museum, I guess. But these are the two vehicles that are probably the dumbest that I own just because I don't use them at all and they're worth a lot right now in today's market, so I should probably just sell them, but I don't want to, because I do really like to look at them. <laughs> and then this is a very practical vehicle. This is a first-gen Toyota Sequoia. This is a 2007. I guess I should talk about mileage on these things. So this one, Tacoma, has about 60,000 miles on it. I don't drive it much anymore because it's like pure expedition vehicle for the last couple of years. This has, the Tundra I think has 8,000 miles on it. This has not many, under 10,000 miles. The FJ80, 80 series Land Cruiser, I think has just shy of 210,000 miles. The FJ60 has like 260,000 miles on it, I believe, but unknown how many miles of that are on the new engine drivetrain. So, that one, this one has 200 some thousand miles, like 207,000 miles, I believe, maybe 208,000. Uh, but this is my, one of my more recent purchases. I tossed a little lift on it. I have videos of this on, I have videos of everything on my channel. So just search them on my channel and you'll find more info. But this is a pretty basic build. I threw a two inch lift on here, uh, like a Bilstein and then Dobinson kind of, Frankenstein lift that I put together. Just installed that in the driveway or in the garage, actually super easy. Swapped out the headlights, put a Prinsu roof rack. These are finally for sale now, if you're wondering. Uh, they were supposed to put them for sale a long time ago and didn't, I don't know what was up really, but they're for sale now. So first gen Sequoia owners, you have another roof rack option in Prinsu. Great rack, super big. I will probably toss a rooftop tent on this and iCamper's new awning, which I have right there soon. This is on uh, basically 33 inch Toyo AT3s as well. These are on the Relations Race Wheels RR7s in bronze. And this is just a great family hauler. This is just kind of a beater in a sense, though, you know, it's a little nice, nicer than I would constitute necessarily a beater, though it does have, you know, some classic beater things, rip seats and whatnot, but interior, you know, dated 2007, though I did get a new screen. I got the cheapest Apple CarPlay screen. It's like a Boss audio something rather, and then put a rear camera in it. But works fine. This has the JBL audio system that sounds, you know, decently good. And third row seating, ton of storage. Still absolutely love this vehicle. Uh, if for some reason Ashley were to want to get a bigger SUV for the family, like change her RAV4 out for the new Sequoia or something, I might let this one go. But right now this is our big people hauler, mover vehicle. This is the one I loan out to friends or family or whatever when they come visit and need a vehicle. Uh, this is a vehicle that will take all of Isabelle's friends out at a birthday party or whatever. Ashley will take camping with her family because I just don't care if people like spill drinks in it or whatever. 
that is that vehicle and I still really much enjoy it. And here is Ashley's RAV. It's a 2019 RAV4. Uh, in hindsight, we really should have got the hybrid model of the RAV4. If anyone is shopping for a RAV4, I know the hybrid's more expensive, but it's definitely what I would recommend on fuel economy and power. This is Lunar Rock, and this is the XLE all-wheel drive version. It's a really sporty looking little SUV. Gets pretty decent gas mileage. Ashley really likes it. It's her daily driver, nimble, easy to park. We did a few modifications to it. Added a KC Flex Era light bar down here that I cut out a portion of the grill and mounted it. That's controlled by a Trigger 4 trigger switch controller and then some small ditch like brackets here with KC highlights flex just the single and then we got a Prinsu roof rack on the top I didn't actually have to pull the headliner I know some people on some models do uh, did have to install some riv nuts or plus nuts on here we just have a minimal amount of crossbars on the top can add more if they need it, but it doesn't add a whole lot of wind noise or height. And sometimes she'll take this out and with a little paddle boards or something and strap some stuff to the roof. But that's basically it. You like it? I do like it. Yeah. And that's Ashley's 2019 RAV4. All right, guys, well, as per usual, as of late, I forgot to film an outro when I was filming the video. So here we are later actually with the Sequoia and a new tent for my camper and their 270 hard shell awning unrelated to this video. But since filming the rest of the video, got this put on, the Sequoia. Such a sweet little rig. Sweet big rig. Sweet big rig. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fleet video. If you have any questions on anything, Ask them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Always appreciate the comments, the thumbs up, the subscribes, all that stuff. And yeah, until next time guys, take care.